Hello everyone and welcome back to Neo. So this episode is a combination of two episodes and post commentary because I am an idiot and forgot to turn on my microphone. These things happen. So this area that we were in, I really enjoyed it. The mines here, they were a challenge. A very big challenge. Um, it's a good thing, but there's a few things I'd want to point out about it, just level design wise, game design wise, there are a few things I really enjoy about the mines. First and foremost, it's like a lot of areas we've seen before in the fact that it's poisoned and rotted and defiled and that's a big thing that we see a lot of in the Souls games. All the way from Demon Souls through Dark Souls 3 we see areas that are in rough shape and emanating poison and just overall not good, filled with a bunch of muck and grime and grossness. But in the Souls games, that's what it is. You're stuck with it. You can't do anything about it. Whereas in this game, in this area, you can overcome it. You can change it. And it's pretty cool being able to interact with the level on that scale. It's not something that you have the option to do in the Souls games, aside from, I mean, maybe in Dark Souls 2 if you count burning the windmill in the, uh, uh whatever it is burning that windmill so that Mytha no longer has poison on the floor of the whole area you fight her. But that's really the only area I'd, that you get any sort of control over the environment in, as opposed to how it is with this. Once you clear the area, it's cleared. And it stays cleared. That's pretty cool. Now, one thing that is a little bit weird, all of those enemies that followed me down, that spinning wheel thing and that yokai that chased me down, this was all in one go right here. I didn't go back and rest at a shrine. Somehow that yokai managed to actually end up popping back up here. He disappeared from down below. I couldn't find him while I was cheesing the wheel thing. And I figured he might have just fallen in a hole. Nope, turns out he's right back here where I left him. Not quite sure why that occurred. I'm not going to complain. That said, the Medusa powders are fantastic. I've grown to love the Medusa powder very much. And I've grown to love the uh, poison one as well. Poison is extremely effective. I've taken a liking to putting a bunch of status effects on enemies, whether it's poison, paralysis, uh, fire, burning. It's all fun to put on them. And that's a good thing. Now, other than that, this area I thought was great from a level design perspective due to how well it backtracks upon itself. Something that really drew me into the Souls games to begin with, how their levels were just completely perfectly designed in that respect. It's something that they shied away from, unfortunately, in the Souls games in my opinion. They don't backtrack to the extent of this. This has, like I've said before, a more Demon Souls-esque vibe, where you can backtrack to such a point where the boss and the place where you rest are close by. And on the topic of the boss for this area. So, the second video started literally right as I was approaching the boss. I ended the first video, the second video starts, and this is the first thing I did. I took care of that one enemy on the way, and then this. And I spent almost half the video trying to deal with this boss in a single fight. I didn't die against this boss once, but it took a lot of time like a lot of time and a lot of focus and it was really just a hugely challenging boss it just didn't feel good to deal with it it was just obnoxious and tedious even because you had to keep luring it and plunging attack against it and you'd get stuck occasionally like I did there and then be forced to take some damage never mind the poison which you can get rid of but it does come back on this section it is, however, quite weak to fire, although I wish I used that bomb a little bit later on when I had a better view at it. That's my own fault. I didn't really think it through. That's okay, though. I ended up... Oh, hello, phone. I ended up making it work, and I ended up getting the boss down reasonably... reasonably low on health, but I was trying everything in my arsenal to get this boss to go down. This was probably the hardest boss in the game for me at this point in time. Uh, and I'm doing this post-commentary a few days after this, so I had other videos that I've recorded. I've recorded more bosses and more stuff 
between when this video was recorded and now. So, you know, the scaling of the boss just felt a little off. And I get it, it's weak to fire. I had the wrong Guardian Spirit on. That much was very clear. However, you shouldn't need to rely on the Guardian Spirit in order to successfully handle a boss. And yes, I should have been using more fire buffs, but again, you shouldn't necessarily need to rely on all of the buffs in order to defeat a boss. This boss was a struggle. I don't really feel like it was the most well-designed boss in the game, because it just didn't feel like it fit with the difficulty curve of the game. But either way, that's really all I've got to say on the topic of the boss. Overall, I liked the level a lot, like I absolutely loved the level. It was fantastic. It just left a little bit to be desired with the enemy difficulty and the boss. Enemy difficulty was honestly a little bit easy at points. Boss difficulty was way, way harder than it needed to be. But that's my opinion on the matter. So that's all I've got. I hope you guys have enjoyed this little video. Sorry again about it being post-commentary, but hey, it is what it is. Either way, guys, thank you all for stopping by. I hope you enjoyed this, and I will see you guys next time.